team call oh did you have a chance to get water Lindsay I can like that yeah. okay <laughs> uh welcome to our team call I know that you guys already know who our guest speaker is because I've been talking her up in all of our various pages and groups but my coach Lindsay is here to talk with all you guys this is I'm pretty sure this is the first time you've ever been on one of our calls right Lindsay I think so. Like I don't think you did one in the beginning. So this is like a huge honor for me to have Lindsay here to talk to all of you guys because all of you guys are here because of Lindsay, technically, because I'm here because of Lindsay. So um, for those of you guys that are new and may, or maybe kind of far in our downline and don't know, Lindsay is my sponsoring coach. She's the coach that I signed up under. She's the one that's mentored me. She's the founder of the Bombshell Dynasty. So when you see us put links to Bombshell Dynasty calls or events, that's who started the whole thing. As you can see from the incredible rap sheet that I posted, in our post about the team call, Lindsay is pretty much life goals. So she <laughs> um, has been a top coach pretty much every year, a top five coach pretty much every year since she's been a coach. She's always been an elite coach. She's been in the top 10, but not only that, in the top five. She was the number one coach. She's also the first female top coach. Um, she's a member of the Millionaires Club and has been for a year or two now, right? Uh I think two or three years. Yeah, because it was already, I mean, by the time I was here, you already were. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, she's a success club all-star legend. That, like, goes without saying at the end of the list. Um, um, and she's also the founder of the Bombshell Dynasty, which, how how big is it now, Lindsay? It's like over 70,000 people. Just yeah, crazy. so all in her downline. And she did all of this without an upline. So... Unlike all of you guys here, she didn't have a coach that was giving her training and giving her insight when she started. She didn't have anyone building a strong leg for her. It was all just her. So um, if anybody is an example of just making it happen and not letting excuses stand in your way, it's Lindsay. So I'm so excited and honored that she's going to talk to you guys today. And I'm just going to hand it over because everything she's going to say is going to be way better than anything I say. So take it over, Lindsay. I don't know about that. You guys are pretty lucky to be in this downline. I can tell you guys because I'm, I'm lucky enough to be in your team page and I kind of watch things as they go down. Just because Becca's has always stood out as that, like, I don't know, innovator. She's got such a ridiculous ability to create and build such beautiful things, but also such intelligent, smart ways of thinking about things that other people just don't think. So you guys are really, really blessed. And I see all the things that she does to keep things engaging for you guys and keep you learning. So just realize how blessed you are because I think a lot of coaches, you know, when you're born into a great team and have this awesome support and you know there's tons of tools, it's almost like a kid that grows up wealthy. It's like it never knows the struggle, but it also doesn't really know how great they have it. Um, and I, I worry about that with my own daughter because I grew up with a crazy family. So anything was awesome. And now, you know, her, it's going to be very different. So I worry about that with my coaches too because I'm like, gosh, are they too spoiled that they don't see what they have in front of them? And for me, like she said, I had to build it up myself. And so I really had to just claw my way up. And, and I think that I was so hungry because of that, knowing there was nothing going to be spoon fed to me. I did things that I think other coaches most of the time do not do. So anyway, what I wanted to be able to do with you guys today, when Beck and I were talking, the most important thing um, that I think I could do for you guys is just to be totally real with what it took to get here. And not that everybody's dream looks like mine, but I think we all want to have a life by design, as like to, I like to call it or refer to it. And basically what that means is just a life the way that back when you were a kid, like you dreamed it might be, you know? And for me, I remember one time I was in uh, junior college. I had dropped out of high school and to take care of my two alcoholic parents and had to take responsibility for everyone else. And I was always like a, a rescuer, like a fixer for everybody else. And I was always trying to be the one that would like save everybody from themselves. But in that period of time, I didn't save myself. Like I forgot to take care of me. 
And I remember in, high, uh, in that college course, people were asking, like, what do I want out of my life? And I was listing all the things that I, I didn't want. Like, I don't want to be, you know, in a bad relationship. I don't want to be poor. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want. And they're like, what do you, what do you want? And I was like, I don't, I don't really know specifically. I mean, I just want to be happy. And I didn't know what that looked like. And because I didn't know what it looked like, I was kind of going on a road to nowhere because if you don't know what you want, you can't really get anywhere. So I can't just get in my car and drive around and eventually end up where I want to be because I don't even know where I want to be. So even when I get there, maybe I don't even realize I'm there. So what I found really important in my journey when I started to uh, work Beachbody was to really define what I wanted to do with my life. And I made some slides for this because I'm a very visual person and I personally need it to be able to speak and stay on track. So I'm going to screen share and you should be able to see me and the, and the slides. Hold on. Okay. So this is sort of a slight overview of what my life by design looked like. I knew I wanted to be able to travel and see the world. Like I grew up in... Florida, which is awesome. It's beautiful. Lots of people vacation here, but I literally had not been outside of Florida um, until I was like 22 years old. And the only vacation my family ever went on, went on was to one time to Disney World. And it was, I, I later found out they were filing for bankruptcy and I had like a little bit left on their credit card. So they went ahead and booked a hotel at Disney World and we were able to go on that vacation. But it was the only vacation we ever went on. So my dream was like, I wanted to be able to see the world. I wanted to be, get, be able to experience you know, what other cultures look like and, and not even just like go on a three day trip or even a week long trip. Like if I wanted to move somewhere like Australia for six months that I could, if I wanted to. And I knew that was like probably a long shot, but I was like, gosh, that'd be so cool. So travel was a big thing for me. And I wanted to be able to take my family with me, which is also very difficult if you have a normal job. And then I wanted to have, um, my husband be home with me and I wanted to be able to have us work together. And even though my husband doesn't work the business like me, which that was a struggle in the beginning because I wanted him to, but we came to realize that we are opposites. And so, um, we found his strengths and we're able to do, you know, stuff that he's really great at that I don't enjoy doing. And I do all the stuff that I really great at and do enjoy doing that he is not great at. So it kind of bounces out. And by the way, I know a lot of people probably struggle with that with their spouse. So um, just to kind of give you guys a heads up, I'm going to be creating something with him to do, to list out some different um, things that husbands can contribute to the business and ideas. That way your guys' spouses can look at that list and it's not like, oh, you have to go and recruit coaches and run challenge groups. So anyway, that's just a heads up. And then I was just like a free spirit. Okay. I will be totally honest with you. I am the worst employee on the planet, hands down. Like my husband and I, uh, we were bartenders together and he was the best. Like he would come in early and, you know, come in for it and like reorganize things for them. And like if anybody needed a shift picked up or if he needed to stay longer, oh, he was done. He was going to do it. Me, I would like show up five minutes late for my shift, but no makeup on, my stuff not even on yet. I'm like still in my velour jumpsuit. And I would go into like check in, go into the bathroom, get ready in the bathroom slowly, and then eventually mosey on out. And then I would want to leave early. And it was, I was horrible. So I knew that I needed to work for myself, but I didn't really know how I would be able to do that. And then um, I grew up in a really, like I said, I kind of mentioned the poor family, but uh, it was really bad. Um, my family like literally had two dachshunds and then they had like multiple litters of babies and the dachshunds were all over the place and it was just like literally animals pooping and peeing all over the house. You could never have people over and my family were like hoarders. So I wanted more than anything in the entire world for my little girl to have the house that everybody comes to and like the parents are cool and she can have a beautiful room and that was so important to me. And honestly, when she was uh, one year old when I got started with this. And that was like one of my biggest driving forces is that I wanted to have her grow up in a, a house that she felt safe and that was clean and it was beautiful and that she could be proud of and bring friends and, uh, friends and family over to. And we host all the Christmases and stuff like that now too. And then, you know, like that picture in the middle shows, um, she was my biggest why because the little baby that you see all hooked up into the wires, that was her. And um, she was born with a 90% chance of cerebral palsy and uh, just a lot of horrible odds. She wasn't supposed to be able to eat for like six months without a tube. And <clears throat> I really felt like I owed it to her because like I had said about my family, me always being the rescuer. 
those people, they weren't my responsibility. But for the first time in my life, when Lena was born, like that was the first time I really did have a serious responsibility. Nobody else is gonna take care of that child but me, and I owed it to her to really step up my game and be able to give her the kind of life that I wanted to give her. And that was scary because I was only 23 years old, or yeah, just turned 24 at the time. And then lastly, over there with the big circle, I wanted friends. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but when you grow up with a crazy upbringing, connecting with other people is really difficult because I felt like I had to hide all that from people to be able to be liked. And so I felt like during high school and stuff, I didn't really grow authentic friendships. And during the bar business, people are dog eat dog and nobody really is a true friend. I came to find that out when I got pregnant and everybody kind of went away. And I wanted to believe that there were people out there like me that wanted a life by design as well, that didn't want to just like fall into the status quo and do things because that's what everything already have, every, everybody else does. And I don't know, just thought differently. And for a little bit, there was a little black hole period that I didn't believe that people like that existed. And then I just started, you know, look at myself and see how I could change. And as I started to change personally and really take personal responsibility for my life, I started to see that I was attracting a different type of friends. And that's my first little tip is if you want a life by design, you have to own it. And you have to stop like letting that self-defeating story that you tell yourself be the reason why you haven't succeeded. You know, as harsh as this quote is, it says the only reason, the only thing standing between you and your goals is the bullshit story you keep telling yourself as to why you can't achieve it. And I believe that to be 100% true because that was so true in my own life because I told that story about my family when people were asking me why I hadn't done this or why did I drop out or, or why did I not complete college or why did this happen or why did that happen? It was like, well, yeah, you know, I grew up with two alcoholic parents, so I didn't really have a good example. And we were poor, so I couldn't, they couldn't pay for my college and I couldn't stay in. And we got in this debt and blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, blame, 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 blame. And because it was a pretty valid story, I mean, it's legit. People were pretty forgiving of the fact that I wasn't doing much with my life. And they were like, yeah, I can understand why that'd be so horrible. And I'm sure you guys have something in your life that has been very traumatizing. You know, you've maybe lost somebody really near and dear to you. I lost my brother to brain cancer and that was devastating. And I wanted everything in me to wanted to use that as an excuse just to be angry and upset. But then I started to look at life a little bit differently. And I said like, okay, I can either use, I can either use these things as my excuse or give them purpose and use them as my reason why I'm deciding to fight. And I remember thinking about my brother. I was about, I was 25 years old when I started um, Beachbody. And he was 25 years old when he died. And I remember thinking, every day from here on out, I've got to not only live for myself and not only live for London, but I've got to live for my brother because he didn't get that time. And I guess it was like that moment of like a clarity in my life that nothing is guaranteed. And what if we all had a life expectancy of like 40 years old? Would you be living your life differently than you're living it now? And as I thought about that, hell yeah. Yes, I would be living it differently. Yes, I would be fighting harder. Yes, I wouldn't be putting things off until someday I would be doing them now or at least working my ass off to where I could have a better chance of actually achieving the things that I wanted to be able to achieve. And so, I think that was the start, me taking ownership of my life was the start of me having that fire in me to fight for my dreams and to fight for the life that I wanted for my family. And I guess that comes down to your why. It's the thing that you're willing to go into the fire and fight for. And if your why is just a good body, eh, I mean, it's not whatever. You're not going to go into a fire for it. So you have to figure out what that is in your life and what that looks like. And I think, you know, starting with that vision of where you want your life to be that starts to form that reason why you want to change. But really figuring out that why is, has been so crucial for me and it's happened multiple times. So once we were in financially in a good shape, I had to like find my new why as to what I was fighting for then because it's not the same. So you guys that have been in the business a little bit longer, some of you have been in for like two and a half years and depending on how much you put into your business and how successful it's become for you, will depend on if your why is the same as it was when it started, but I would, I would uh, challenge you guys to reevaluate quarterly 
and ask yourself, like, is that same thing that I said was my why, is that still motivating me? Because I've had to change mine like at least once a year to refire myself up. Because like Becca said, top, top five, five years in a row, the same why didn't drive me each time. And there was a different thing, a different purpose behind it. So anyway, owning your life, getting rid of the excuses, looking at the things that have happened to you and asking yourself like how maybe they've happened for you. Because I look at my story, now looking back at my Beachbody journey, and all the things that happened to me are the, actually the things that ended up connecting me to the people that I desired to be friends with, to, to desire to have in my life, the people that really felt inspired by my journey and felt encouraged. Like, I like the word encourage because if you think about it, <clears throat> as I was living in courage, being courageous with my journey and forthright with sharing it, I was allowing other people to find the courage in themselves to be able to do the same in their life. And I really believe that's what we do as coaches in general is just live in courage and we encourage other, we give other people the courage um, to go after their own dreams. So owning your life. The next thing is being proactive versus reactive. <clears throat> I like a, a good example of this is the other day with the Punta Cana uh, trip, which was, you know, obviously crazy and frustrating, I'm sure. And, you know, I'm dealing with, I was actually about to host a call and dealing with the craziness that was going down, people freaking out. And, you know, I just had to remind people like, hey, what, if there's not something that you can actually do about it, like if there's nothing that you can actually do to control the situation, you have to figure out how you can control your own emotion about it and what you're going to do about it. I mean, either you're going to hit success club every single month and give yourselves the best possible odds of getting off the wait list. Cause I can tell you there were people this year that were above 4,000 on the wait list that ended up getting in um, a month or two ago. And there's actually still people getting off right now because people are pregnant now that weren't pregnant before that can't go or people that canceled as coaches or people that can't afford the money because they didn't earn the success club points to be able to pay off their crews. So there's so many different reasons why people might not be able to go to Punta Cana that ended up registering and getting a spot. So letting yourself get all emotional about something that you have no control over is stupid. It's a waste of your energy. And so <clears throat> I think of that a lot when, in, with coaching because there's so many variables and it's a people business, it's a relationship business. So it's, you can get very emotionally attached to certain coaches or to certain customers or somebody saying that they're going to do something and then don't end up doing it. And instead of getting all emotionally crazed over it, I just have tried to remember, I've got to be proactive. I've got to find solutions. I've got to be the one that's in control of the situation and not letting everything go awry and me freak out because it doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't serve me in any way. So I like this little picture I saw the other day, and it's actually like an active picture, um, but it doesn't work on my slide. But it's all about which way you look. So you have the one girl over there, and she's facing the opposite against the wind, and the hair is blowing in front of her face. And then there's the other one that's like, yay! And I see that a lot in coaches. Like, you have to find which way the wind is blowing and figure out a way to make it blow the hair out of your face so that you're not getting frustrated about things that you don't have control over that are not a big deal in the long run. Um, this little quote that says, we can complain because rose bushes have thorns or rejoice because thorn bushes have roses. And I think that's just another example of looking at things in a different way and not getting caught up in maybe bad habits. I know because I was that quitter, because I was that like get angry about things, it took me really practicing to look at things in a different way for me to be able to get over it. Ah, sacrifice. So I have sacrificed a ton to be where I am today. And it's hard because at this point, people look at the journey and they see the end result. And so it's easy to say, well, it was all worth it because you got there. Well, I didn't know. Do you think I knew as I was doing and failing and doing and failing and doing and failing with no upline to help me that I knew I was going to be successful? No, I had no idea. And I had nothing to base it off of. Like, I didn't have anybody to tell me, well, here's how my income progressed. And here's how, you know, things went. Or this is what I said to people that started to work. And nothing. I had nothing. So, I, but I literally had just blind faith and passion. And so, there was a lot of sacrificing that went on. I love this law of sacrifice that says, to attain something of greater value, 
one must give up something of lesser value. This whole idea of short-term sacrifices for long-term success is going to be the key in creating your life by design because the quick fix in any area of your life does not work long-term. It's always going to be the easiest, you know, you can like go and get Xenodrin or something like that and <laughs> pop pills and it might give you like a little bit of water loss, but it's not actually teaching you how to keep that long-term and thus you're going to gain that weight back and who knows what's in that pill actually. And, or you can go and do a beach body challenge and do things the healthy way and learn to find people to keep you accountable and build relationships with other healthy people. And you can have a great nutrition shake and you can have a great meal plan. And you can have this great workout that you can do forever and always. But that's the harder way, right? Because you actually have to put effort into that. It's not just taking a pill and taking a sip of water. You have to do something about it. The same thing goes with building a business. It's much easier just to go, go apply at a job and go work for someone else and know you do the exact same thing every day and you know you're gonna get a certain pay, even if it's not that great, you know you're gonna get that certain pay and you're gonna get paid on every Friday or every other Friday and you're gonna get that 1% bonus for Christmas and it's like guaranteed and so it's the easier way. But the better way is gonna be something that you're gonna be building over time that's gonna be investing in yourself and it's gonna grow incrementally and eventually your residual income is something that pays you even when you're on vacation. And that's so much cooler, but it takes more work and it takes more sacrifice. And so for me, that was uh, TV, a lot of TV hours that I missed and I am a huge Bachelor fan, come on. I would watch all 20 seasons back to back if I could. But I wanted my freedom more. And the truth is I gave up Bachelor Nights for the last five years for our Bombshell Dynasty call um, because I wanted to not have London grow up in a day daycare or have someone, someone else be watching her first steps or someone else teaching her how to talk or someone else, you know, like I wanted to be that person. And so I gave up those things and a lot of other things too to be able to have what you see on the bottom, which is her there with me and her seeing me work out and it just being a natural lifestyle that we have that we're always home together and that it's, you know, me being able to go to like yesterday swim lessons with my husband, watching her swim in the middle of the day. It's so cool for me. Like that's the life I wanted and little glimpses like that remind me. But you have to have that vision long term to make those short-term sacrifices because it is tempting to watch The Bachelor instead of getting on these team calls. So bravo to you, because I don't know what's on on Wednesdays, but for getting on these calls and spending 30, 40 minutes of your time learning when you could be doing other things. And come on, you can still bring your wine to the call and drink while you watch the team call, but you should be learning every single day. And if Becca's gonna be hosting something like this, it's well worth uh, seeing what successful people are, people are doing to grow their business. <clears throat> Embrace failure as your best teacher. So I put two different examples, and they're gonna seem silly, but it's so true because I think there's so much comparison in this business, it's so hard, like I just said, People see where people are today. You might see where Becca is today. You might see where I am today and think, well, yeah, it sure would be nice to be like that. I wish I was like further along. And, or maybe there's someone that started at the same time as you, but they were at a different point in their life. Like they had already either finished a program or maybe they already had this big following or whatever, and they have faster success than you. And it's easy to compare and look at them and be like really frustrated with yourself. But you have no idea the work that went into it before that. So a baby. A baby that's learning how to walk, how many times do they fall before they learn how to walk? I mean, they start off basically like learning how to put their head up, and then eventually they get their arms up, and then eventually they start rocking back and forth on their knees, and then eventually it's like, oh my gosh, they're starting to crawl, and then eventually they're pulling themselves up on stuff, and then eventually they're scooting around the table, and eventually they take a step and they fall, and they keep going, you know, like they don't give up because their desire to be able to move, their desire to be able to walk is so strong that they're willing to fail over and over and over and over again. And the baby's not looking at the boy who's running and thinking, I might as well just give up. That guy's running and I can't even get up. I can't even stand up on two feet. You know, like the baby doesn't think that. The baby just keeps moving at their own pace. They know that in good time of practice, they're eventually gonna be able to get there. And I think about you guys all the time when I see little babies like that, because I'm like, that's exactly like coaching. Or you can go over to the other side 
And you have a little girl learning how to do letters, and this is where my daughter is, like learning how to write for the very first time, and it's frustrating, like why the heck can I, my hand not make a straight line? Why can't I make that letter? And <clears throat> you know, it is frustrating to learn those basic steps, and you wanna be able, she wants to be able to write stories. You know, like my daughter has like the most creative mind ever, and she sits down with me and she wants to write stories, but it's super frustrating because she writes letters backwards. She's got dyslexia, and so she writes letters backwards and has a really hard time with it. But she's not comparing herself to someone who's in high school preparing for the SATs because it's not the same. You know, she realizes where she's at. She's got to work at what she's doing right now to be able to master it, to be able to eventually write stories on her own and <clears throat> do the things that she desires to do. So same thing with you guys, learning the basics and mastering those basics is so important. And I think a lot of times we're always like looking for that secret sauce. We're like, oh, if we just master ads, that would be, then I would be so much more successful, so much faster. Okay, literally up until last week, um, my husband ran an ad for the very first time in my business. I don't even think it did anything, but I have built my entire business without running an ad. And that's not to say they don't work. I, I assure you, I'm sure they work for some people. I'm just saying you don't have to. You know, like you don't have to go and do every single thing that you see every top coach doing because they've all been on the journey where they, they learn the basics first. And you don't get into middle school and go get an algebra, a college algebra book and start looking at it, right? You have to learn like, at your own pace, master those things so that you can move on and eventually understand the stuff that, at the college level. So view this the same way, you know, think, idea, try, do, do it again, do it again, do it again, keep going, success. Like that's exactly how it happens, except for like failure all in there, you know? But it's a great teacher because it teaches you, oh, that didn't work, okay. Um, what can I do differently? All right, so I'm gonna go about it this way. And maybe it's just a slight wording, you know, change that you make. For example, when Carl Deichler was making Beachbody uh, and they had P90X, P90X failed miserably. They were doing an infomercial, failed miserably. And they tried it like six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 times. It just failed, 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 failed. They kept tweaking like little words here and there. And eventually, I don't remember how many times it was, but it was a lot. Um, eventually, something happened and bam, it just blew up. And it was just little tweaks to how they phrase something and how things were positioned in the infomercial. The same thing goes with your business. There's little things, like maybe it was like, oh, I should have put a call to action there. I should have included this. You know, like little tweaks that you're making can cause something that's not working to work <clears throat> or vice versa, depending on um, what you're looking at. So just you want to make sure that you're not overthinking and thinking that everything that you do is horrible. No, it's just tweaking it little by little and getting better and better every single day. Cheers to that. Okay, I'm gonna keep going on the failure thing. This is a big deal. Um, this actually comes from a slide from the new leader thing that I did the other day, but it was so good that I felt like it needed to be shared because I think people feel alone um, when they're failing or when they're feeling like a failure. And so it says, don't believe for a second that you're the only one who has ever felt defeated, has dropped rank, has had a coach quit, has been made fun of, has doubted themselves, has felt like they are nothing special, has had their spouse doubt them, has been stood up for a call, has feel, feared, feared they would fail, has a team that doesn't try, contemplates giving up, and feels like a failure. Because I don't speak from those things uh, because I've heard them from other people. Like, I have experienced all of that. That is 100% my journey. And it didn't just happen in the beginning. It's happened since then. There's been times where we had a huge goal and then bam, everything comes crashing down. And there's been times where a diamond coach quits. And there's been times when I woke up and I just didn't feel qualified. And I just didn't feel like I had anything to offer. And that is gonna happen to every single one of you guys. At some point or another, one of those things or all of those things are gonna come up and you're gonna feel completely overwhelmed. And that's really where, for me, taking a step back, <clears throat> I usually take like a, a day or so off. Today, it was one of those days, I actually, it wasn't too bad, but I just wanted to like break away for a little bit. I went and got a blowout, and then I went to the mall, and I didn't even buy anything. I just literally walked around and got inspired by things. Like, I just looked at how people market, and this is so weird, but I just look at how people market things, and like, I think of looked at how they, some people were super creative with their designs. Like there's a girl that does the blowout bars at 
where they are, mostly in California. And she's like, create a whole product line. I'm just so impressed by that. So anyway, as I was walking around looking at things and just by myself, I started to feel the fire again because I was pulled away from the thing that was frustrating me, the business, and doing things that inspired me. So find the thing that inspires you when you're in those moments. Find <clears throat> your leader who can talk to you and be able to walk through it and let you know that you're not alone because I guarantee your leaders will been through it. And <clears throat> find that inspiration again. And sometimes that's through personal development. Sometimes even when I'm in those moments and I do the personal development, it doesn't feel like anything. Like Billy can tell you, I've literally listened to like um, audios or YouTube videos for like two days and I'm like, this shit sucks. Like this is awful. I don't know why nothing, nothing is even helping me at all. But something eventually like cracks me and it's doing those basics. It's doing the personal development at the same time. I'm like doing a workout, which trust me, I don't want to do almost never want to do, but I'm doing it. And I'm talking to people, getting to know them and not feeling it. But I do it until I start to feel it. And eventually I do start to feel it. But sometimes it takes longer than others. All you have to know though is you're not alone. And it's just part of the journey to be able to go through those feelings. And I'll tell you why it's there. <clears throat> this slide says, do learn to embrace the failures. It's there to teach you something and allow you to share those lessons with others. So I want to give you an example real quick. Uh, this is a real example of something that I went through and then one of my coaches went through, I got to give to her, she got to give it to one of her coaches. And so all those things I just told you, all those feelings that I've been through, and I know that many of you guys have been through, the reason why I went through them is so that I could share with you that you're not alone, right? So that I could share with you what I did to get out of it. The same thing happened. So Bonnie Ingalls, one of my personally sponsored coaches as well. And when she first signed up, she was just going, her friends were awful to her. And they were just degrading her, telling her how stupid she was, that they were like, they hated all her posts and that they were so annoying and they were having to block her because, you know, she just, it's a scam that she's in and all these just horrible things. I was having to be on the phone with her like every other day trying to talk her off the ledge. And I remember telling her like, my friends were the same way. Everybody that I was completely nuts, a part of a scam, definitely going to come back to bartending anytime now. It was not going to work, you know, that I was just broke and trying whatever. And I was able to tell Bonnie from my personal experience, like, this is what I went through. This is what I did. This is, I know how you feel because it is, it is super frustrating. You do feel like you just want to sink in, you know, and go into a black hole. This is what I did to get over it. You know, and these are the, some of the quotes that helped me. And she was able to pull through. And then, you know, I think six months, maybe a year later, she came to me and she's like, girl, so crazy. One of my coaches, you know, almost the, dead on the conversation we had, I just had with one of my coaches and I was able to talk her through it and she was just about to quit. And it's like, that's exactly why we go through hardships so that we can be able to work through them ourselves, to learn the lesson that we're there to learn, to be able to go teach that to our team, to one day be able to help someone else that's going through it. Because like the best gift that you could ever give someone is the fact that you understand what they're feeling. And I think when we feel like we're not alone, all of a sudden our problems don't feel like they're completely overwhelming and killing us. We feel like, okay, if that person got through it, I can too. And that is another gift that you guys have as coaches is just to be that voice of experience to tell someone, hey, look, I have so been in your shoes and here's what I did and I would love to walk you through it. Bam. Next. Okay. I'm almost done. Embrace the vehicle to your life by design. I fought this one bad because um, my whole life, I, I didn't think I would ever be in network marketing. <laughs> um, I actually hated network marketing. I thought it was such a scam, and oh, I still think there's many scams out there. But um, I really believe like if God himself would have come down and been in front of me and said like, hey Lindsay, you're gonna top network marketer one day. That's your, that's your destiny, I'd be like, yeah, that's no, that's not gonna happen. So I fought the fact that this was network marketing and everything in my ego wanted me to run. <laughs> everything in my ego was like, I can't do that. And I would never, people would be so judgmental of me and just to be a part of one of those things is like, ugh. And then not to mention it's fitness and I don't even like working out. So I was like, great. Like, 
I don't want to be somebody who's in a gym all the time and like has to talk about working out all the time. That sucks. And then it was like, oh great, my whole life is going to be about network marketing and fitness. And I fought it because I didn't want to do that. But then I looked at my life that I wanted to create for my family and I stopped fighting. And even though I wanted the Mercedes and I had a PT cruiser, <laughs> in my opinion, back then, I got in the damn PT cruiser and I started driving because I'm not going to fight the fact I, it's either the PT cruiser or no vehicle. So it's either keep living that crappy life that I was living or get in the vehicle that was given to me and start moving forward. And so I stopped fighting it. And then like I was big on, I was not big on social media. Um, I had like a hundred, I think I had like 150 friends on, maybe less than that, um, <clears throat> on my Facebook when I first signed up. And I never used it. Like you can go back to 2009 and I like never used social media. And I know there's a lot of people that are like, I don't like social media. I don't like posting. I have nothing to post about. Okay. Well, it's either post on social media and share your life and learn how to do it. Or you go sit in your cubicle or go work a job that you don't really like and put your kid in daycare or do whatever. So you either do that or you do learn how to do social media and you learn to like it. And so I learned to like it and I learned to use it and I studied the crap out of it because I want to be able to do it properly if I want to have my life by design. And so I always get on the phone with people that are like, I, I just don't like to post on social media. Too bad. Do you like it better than the crappy job that you have? Then you better go learn how to post on social media. So don't fight this vehicle. It's amazing. It can change your life. And not only that, but you end up changing a whole lot of lives in the meantime. Just remember that dream you have, being on fire. And it's just a matter of time before it's gone. So you might as well go run and get in that damn PT Cruiser and drive to go turn up, get the stuff out of the fire that's important to you. Because... When you want your dreams bad enough, you will do whatever it takes to get there. And then lastly, I just want to talk to you about how to change your life. And this little analogy or little system, um, it really did help me to see what I did right in the, in the beginning of my journey and why I was able to create some success. And it's a big reason why I'm such an advocate of personal development and being able to like listen to audios that are going to help feed you the right information because I didn't grow up with parents that would be the ones that were encouraging. Like, I don't think my parents have ever, ever told me that they're proud of me or anything like that. So I didn't have parents that were like encouraging of me. So my beliefs about what was possible for my life shrank <laughs> over time. And you believe, you start to believe that, you know, like, well, maybe you're just not meant for big things. Like maybe that's just not the position you were put in. So most people, when they start as a coach, they think they have a certain amount of potential. Like they, the way that they see themselves and their potential is based on how much action they take. So if they are somebody who's like, look, I'm no Becca, I'm not super great. Like I don't have a eye for, you know, creativity and imaging and I'm not a photographer, so I'm probably not going to do that well with it and my social media is small. They're going to take little action right? They're not going to take that much action because they don't want to risk that much. And they're kind of like scared about posting about the whole beach body thing anyway, because it's probably a scam. So based on that little action, they're going to get little results. And when they have very little results, what are they going to think? See, I told you, I knew I wasn't going to do anything with this business because it's probably a scam and I'm no Becca. And so based on that, it goes into your beliefs, your beliefs shrink to be even less. So you believe you have even less potential and then based on that little potential that you believe you have, you take even less action. And based on that little action that you took, you get basically no results. And basically with the results that you got, you're like, yeah, I should have never started this. I just need to, you know, get out now before we waste any more of our $16 a month on that damn business fee. And so then you're out, right? Or... You guys, what I did was I really dove in. Instead of focusing on what I believe my potential was, because if I looked at all the facts, if I looked at my background, all of my failures, all the things that I had ever quit, which was literally everything, including high school, and I looked at the fact I had no upline, <laughs> the chart would say I was gonna be a failure. So I, can't, I couldn't have focused on that. What I had to focus on was creating that life by design, that chart that I wanted, and then diving in 100% on my beliefs. I would sit there at night and I would envision what life would look like when I was at that slide and that I showed you in the beginning of me 
having this house that was completely paid for. And then I would be sitting there with London and we'd be watching movies together and she would have a couple of friends over. And then my husband would come and sit onto the couch and he would snuggle with us and we'd be able to spend all kinds of time together and be able to go on vacations whenever we wanted. And I would envision like that freedom and what it would feel like when it wouldn't, what it would feel like when I didn't have like the elephant on my chest of like the debt that we were in and all the things that were scaring me and making me feel like a failure. I was instead thinking of all the things that were gonna go right, all the things, all the people's lives that I could possibly change, what it would be like to be on stage at Summit, to be able to walk across the stage and be so excited. And based on those beliefs, my beliefs started to change, like those visions that I started to have, I believed my potential was greater. And because I believed my potential was greater, I took more action. And because I took more action, I got better results. And because my results were pretty good, I was like, oh, I did that, okay, I hit success book. Let me try to do it again, my beliefs grew. And based on those beliefs growing, I, I felt I had more, more potential, I took more action, I got more results. And based on those results growing, I was like, oh man, I got this. And then I had more potential, I took more action, I got more results. And that cycle, instead of going the opposite way of making me feel like a failure, shifted. And I, I envision it just like how if you ever had a whirlpool and you were like that kid that went in the circle, and you tried to change the way that the waters work, but that's what I did. I decided to, instead of going against the water, like struggling, oh gosh, so hard because the water's going against me, I just turned around and I changed my way of thinking. And all of a sudden it was like a hand was at my back just pushing me along. And it was like, oh, it's so much easier to go this way. And so I would challenge you guys to really think about the life that you want to create, why you want to create it, all the things that are in your life that are really, really going to change that are going to be so worth the short-term sacrifices <clears throat> and get clear about that and how you need to shift your mind to be able to have, you know, the, the, I guess the courage to be able to take more action in your business so that you can have more results because it's possible for anybody. This, this business is not play favorites. I've seen people that everyone else would have thought that person would have failed kill it. And if you even look at like the top coaches, they don't even, they don't even look the same other than me and Bonnie and Brittany. I don't know why we look the same. It's a law of attraction. But I swear to you, the rest of them do not look the same. And it's, it does not play favorites. They come from different backgrounds. They have different ways that they share the business. Some people do Instagram. Some people do like pages. Some people do blogs. Some people do YouTube. Some people do Instagram, whatever. But it doesn't matter how you do it. It's just choosing those routes, learning them, becoming your best every single day, and continue to push forward. So anyway. I am going to open it up for questions for a couple of minutes. If you guys have any, feel free to ask. I'm going to exit out of screen share. And then um, Becca's going to share the slides with you guys as well in case you want them. Anyone? I saw the chat. Lindsay, I'll jump in with a question. Okay. Okay, so I, and I'm not typing it in because I'm on a tablet and it takes me an hour to type one word. <laughs> um, my question for you is in the beginning, um, when you were building your business, how did you stay organized beyond lists, um, like handwritten lists? Were you using just a spreadsheet? Were you using the tools in Beachbody, um, the coach online office? Um, cause I know I've been seeing like the, spo uh, the sponsored ads for like automatic CEO and the CRM, yeah. and I'm just, I'm trying to figure out the best way to stay organized. So just so you guys know, I'm not an organized person. And I try very hard. Like I bought every kind of planner. Um, Becca had this beautiful day designer at her retreat. And I was like, oh my gosh, that, I'll, if I had that one, I'll probably be organized. I was for about two weeks and then I don't even know where it is anymore. And it doesn't really matter because I had to find things that worked for me. So um, hold on one second. I need to get up real quick. Uh, wait, I hope I don't fall in front of you guys. Hold on one second. Okay, I got it. Okay, so the only thing that has worked for me long term has been this thing right here, and it's called <clears throat> plannerpads with a S dot com. So if you're an unorganized person, the great thing about this is I couldn't lose it. And that was what happens with most things. So um, the cool thing about it is it has different rows. So like each of these are different columns. And then it has like a day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then it has like this little list. <clears throat> and so basically what I was doing is I was, each column that I showed you had either 
um, new friend, new Facebook friend. Those are the people I was adding on Facebook. And, or it had um, challenger applications, or it had coach applications, or, oh gosh, what were some of the other rows? Oh, some of my new coaches. And then I would put my calls in the call schedule part of the uh, middle section. And then I would have like my new coaches on one side of the little bottom part over here. And I would say if I had their one-on-one uh, -on -one call with them over here, and then I would put their like successful points over here. And now I have an assistant, so that's good. But until then, I literally did not have an assistant until June of last year, and I did everything by myself, and that's what I used. And it's simple. It's not one of those fancy schmancy um, SEO things or whatever. Not SEO. What is it called? CRM. And I've never used one of those. I use um, MailChimp for like newsletters and stuff. And once a week, I send a newsletter to my personally sponsored coaches with upcoming events. Um, let's say we're doing like a business opportunity call or we're doing a sneak peek or there's a challenge group starting out. I'll, I'll put those in the newsletter for that week and I'll show who's doing the team call that week. And maybe if there's some kind of promotion going on, I'll share that in that newsletter. <clears throat> so that was the one way I kept the communication with my team. And then, um, let's see, what else? Oh, I use acuity scheduler dot com for my um, people to schedule calls so I would block off my day a uh, few hours a day in the middle of the day that I was available and they could go in there and schedule the call and then I in acuity scheduler you can ask some questions based on like so I can say like what questions do you have for me for the call for the call and uh, what are some specific goals you're working with and you can ask you can type out whatever whatever questions you want and for me that helped me because in the beginning I was doing calls with coaches and they would be like an hour maybe even more sometimes long and it was like what did we get accomplished in that call so now I get on it and I try to treat this very much like a business like you know what's the purpose of this call before I get on I go over their questions and I'm like okay so when I get on I'm like okay I saw your question about this this and this that way we're not talking about their baby for the first 20 minutes love their baby I check them out on Facebook and I comment but we got to get to business so um, that would be another thing that was a super game changer for me for organization is being able to have that call scheduler and be able to ask those questions. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, good. Anyone else? Lindsay, in the chat, um, there's a few. So Jay says, I have a question. As a male, I feel like I'm in a very big minority trying to get started. This is my first month. It seems that many things are geared towards women. I know there are very successful men, but any advice for a new 40 something male to get started? I love the products and helping people. So I know once I get rolling, I'll be fine. Just getting rolling. Yep. So um, my most successful coach is a guy by the name of Scotty Hobbs. And I think I have the two top successful coaches in the business. So Scotty is one. And then Miguel Carrasco is another one. He's the top Canadian coach and he's awesome. So one, I would go and follow at least those two guys and see, and also Steve Ferris is another one you should follow. They do a really good job. Um, are you married by chance, Jay? Do you have a family? <clears throat> oh wait, I don't think my thing's scrolling down. Oh, okay. Caleb Thomas too. Yeah, he's good too. So they really do a good job of appealing to both men and women. And I think that's kind of important as a guy. One, it's another way of like, how do you think about it? The girl with the blowing hair, the girl with the blowing backwards. If you're a minority, you also have a better opportunity. We're all girls, we're fighting against each other. So like, you're in a pool, shoot. The guys that are stepping up and being successful are killing it. It's just a matter of how you look at things. But when I got into business, I was the only person, there'd never been a female top coach there was ne never a girl that looked anything like me that was in, you know, doing successful things with business and somebody who didn't lead with fitness. But I looked at that like, well, shoot, there's surely got to be some other girls out there like me that don't connect to those girls and don't connect to the guys that maybe they'll connect to me. And so I really took my brand and I ran with it. And Jay, I would suggest you do the same. Think about the ways that you're unique and the guy that is out there like you and talk to that guy. And I think the more we are like very specific with who our brand is, that's the more likely we're going to attract people like us, which is who we're going to best help anyway. But um, anyway, with back to Scotty and <clears throat> Miguel, they do a really good job of um, talking about their family. And I think the hardest thing with a guy to appeal to a woman is when you're friend requesting a girl, obviously she's like, who's this guy friend requesting me? 
So Scotty is such a great, he does such a great job of highlighting his wife and his family and his kids and his passions um, and is so appealing to both. And I would say all the guys listed, those are just amazing uh, guys to follow because they're so good at doing both and making sure that they're not just like beefcake guys at the gym talking about fitness. Um, because the great thing about girls is we are not just like a one and done type of uh, sale. We're usually like going to try new things all the time. And I think that's why it's done really well for, with, for females is because we're constantly trying to do new things. Whereas guys are content just to sort of go to the gym and do bicep curls and, um, and bench press. But anyway, I hope you, that I answered your question. Definitely check them out. And then Scotty has a ridiculous YouTube channel as well. So his videos would probably be super helpful too. You want to do one more question? Is this 9, 9.55? Um, you have always done a really great job at like sharing your story, your background. I think I've heard it a gajillion times. I could tell your story. Um, however, one thing that I'd like to know, like as a coach is you talked about your failures and how you kind of deal with them a little bit, but what is, or what was the most, if you are, you're open to sharing it, what was the most like heart wrenching failure that you've, um, experienced as a coach and how did you come back from it? Hmm. Dang, I don't know. I remember one that was like super embarrassing that I can probably say that would be, I mean, other than like people in the beginning just being super hurtful, um, but I don't know, I just have blocked that out. I do that sometimes. But um, I went, I qualified to be at the leadership retreat and back then it was only diamond. And I remember I was so excited to go because I just knew it was gonna be a huge deal. And I was like, I hit diamond, so pumped. And then like, I woke up the morning to go and I was emerald. And I never experienced, like, I was on such a high to have that deflated <clears throat> was, it like shook my confidence like none other. And I'm sure I've had more um, failures that were monumental like that. And honestly, there's been ones when I'm further along, just mentally um, that have affected me a lot. Like people, you know, talking behind your back in the business or trying to say, you know, I've had people say stuff like I bought social security numbers and made up fake accounts and that's how I got to the top and things like that. Like, or that somebody even said like I uh, used, I was advertising on porn sites and that's how I found, I don't know. It was like, I've heard the craziest rumors and those are always like hurtful. Anytime that you have people that are trying to like, when you've worked so hard for something and people are trying to pull you down, that's always really hurtful. But as far as like as a new coach, that first rank drop was like, it would have been so easy to give up at that point because I really had, like I had made no money guys. Like I was working 80 to hundred hours a week minimum. <laughs> I don't even remember if I slept the first six months and I was making like a hundred maybe dollars a week, um, like six, uh, four to six months in. Six months in I was probably like 200. Whereas as a bartender, if anybody's bartender had been in the hospitality industry, I could have done that in a night. And so that was really hurtful. Ooh, I got one. My husband. Oh, there was one night we were out and he was laying into me because we were losing our home. And our bills, like we were literally on food stamps and just awful. But I was working so hard. I was so passionate about the business and I really saw the big picture for it, but he didn't see it yet. And, um, he was just telling me like how much of a disappointment like I had been because <clears throat> I should have, you know, like I should have just gone back to bartending and I'm putting our family in detriment and all that kind of stuff. And that was just, I just remember being so hurt because I was so passionate about what I was doing. Like I was the, we were the poorest we had ever been, but I felt the wealthiest um, as far as like just feeling fulfilled. And that was really difficult um, just to feel like he didn't, see it the way that I saw it and that he didn't believe in me in that moment. And, um, he's told that story before on a call before, but that was probably, that was the, probably the biggest feeling of failure that I had to get past was like the fact that the biggest, most important person in my life didn't believe in me at that point. So anyway, I'm sure you guys have experienced that. Some of you. All right, guys. Well, it is almost 10 o'clock. 
But I seriously loved hanging out with you and I'm so grateful to Becca for asking me because I think what you've done is incredible and you should be so proud of yourselves. I mean, I know that there's going to be bumps in the road and there's going to be things that happen, but keep your vision on the end goal and keep reminding yourself of all the different ways that you've changed and not focusing on just one. I think that's a big mistake people make is you're only focused on a rank or a income when there's so many different ways. I mean, think about it the same way we tell our challengers, like don't just focus on the scale, you know, like measure it in different ways. But yet we're looking at like one area of our business saying, why isn't this changed? Um, I promise you, if you focus on the activities that Becca's telling you to do, you will succeed. Um, and I just, I'm excited to see it happen. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Now the chat's blowing up with everybody saying thank you. <laughs> thing. As, usual, as usual, perfect timing, I think, for this time of year. And, you know, the, the middle of January can sometimes feel like a little bit of a slump coming off New Year's. So mm -hmm. it's nice to get some belief pump back into you. So um, I know everybody is so thankful for you to take some of your time, especially late at night. Tell London and Billy, thank you for sharing you with us tonight too. <laughs> of course. And hey, just a reminder guys, like I know that everybody gets freaked out if they don't have like a big boom in their business the first couple weeks of the year. But um, just judging by the last five years, it really happens February on not really in January because um, people are sort of like getting their life back on track after taking a hiatus for, for two months. So don't be concerned. Just keep taking action and like don't focus on the results. Just take, focus on the action and I promise the results will come. So true. Thank you. All right, guys. 10 o'clock. We did good finishing on time tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, everybody else. I'll get the call uploaded and Lindsay was gracious enough to give us our slides. So I'll put it in the team page and you guys can pass it on if you want to your downlines as well. Thank you. Bye. Thanks guys. Bye.